एस चांद प्रेजेंट्स एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एस पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम do you know that we can produce a particular shape of the metal by melting that metal and pouring that metal in a mold that process is called as casting and that is majorly used in the industrial practices we'll be learning the casting processes in today's video Hello everyone welcome to S Chand Academy and I am Anmol Bhatia and in this part of the video we will be learning about the basic casting operations for detailed conceptual clarity you can refer to the book by S Chand publishing the link of the book is there in the description box below so this is the first part of the video which is the metal casting process and this topic is a part of the course manufacturing practices so firstly let us understand the definition of a casting process so casting is basically a process in which a metal is melted to the liquid state and then that liquid metal is poured in a cavity which is called as a mold we wait the metal to solidify and then the final desired shape is produced the video that is there on the screen is showing the metal casting process in which as you can see that the molten metal is there in a crucible and then that molten metal is being poured in a hollow cavity that is called as the mold and after solidification the final desired product is achieved now let us understand the different steps which are there in the casting process number 1 is making the pattern so here we will be creating a pattern in the second step we'll create a mold and if required we'll also create a core inside that mold then we'll melt the metal we'll pour the metal inside the mold we'll wait for the solidification of the metal will remove the casting from the mold and ultimately will perform the fettling operation and after performing the fettling operation if certain property enhancement is required in the casting we go for the heat treatment processes and finally will test or perform the inspection for uh, detection of any faulty castings so firstly let us understand what is a pattern and how do we prepare the pattern so pattern is basically a replica of the final item that you want to produce let's say you want to produce an item which is let's say this item an item that you want to produce like this so exact replica of this item is to be created and that replica is called as a pattern that will create an impression on the sand and it will create a cavity of the similar type so this cavity is desired and in order to uh, get the cavity we have to produce the exact replica of the item and we will imprint that replica on the sand which would create a cavity and on that cavity we will be pouring the metal there are certain materials which are used as a pattern material and majorly we use this wood as a pattern material because of its features like it is easily available it is having low weight it has low cost and wood can be shaped easily for these features we can use wood as a pattern material more than 90% of the casting we use this wooden pattern but the major aspect of the wood is there that it absorbs moisture so the distortion and dimensional changes generally occur in in this type of castings this wood is generally having the lower life and only it is suitable for small quantity productions then we have the second category which is the metal majorly for the large type of castings we use this metal and in those situation when we have the closer dimensional tolerances wood uh, as compared to wood the metal uh, patterns have the longer life and we majorly use aluminium 
for this pattern the other materials with the which can be used are cast iron or brass then we have the third category which is of the plastic because of the feature which is low weight formability that can be formed easily and it has smooth surfaces and durability we can use plastics plastics do not absorb moisture so the dimensional stability part is there in case of the plastic and it also has corrosion resistances if we compare it with metals then we have the other category of the pattern material which is the polystyrene polystyrene uh, basically changes to the gaseous state whenever we heat the polystyrene polystyrene patterns are generally the, dis the disposable patterns and they are majorly suitable for only the single castings when the molten metal is poured into the cavity so polystyrene uh, transforms into the gaseous states and it is usually uh, made for the small and complicated shaped castings so this is a one time uh, pattern and after using it, it it gets transformed into the gaseous state so it is a kind of a disposable pattern so so far we learned about wood we learned about the metal and then the plastic and ultimately we learned about the polystyrene which can be used as a pattern material then uh, coming to the topic of the pattern materials we have to provide certain allowances on the pattern and why this allowance is required uh, when whenever we are uh, let's say pouring the metal inside uh, the cavity and for cavity creation we we want the pattern so what happens here whenever we pour the metal so general tendency is after the solidification the metal generally shrinks so in order to have an um, allowance in order to have an extra material on the surface of the final product we have to give certain allowances uh, to the pattern so the first and the foremost allowance that is provided on the pattern is this shrinkage allowance as the name suggests that the metal when uh, converts from a liquid state to the solid state it generally uh, undergoes a shrinkage so whenever the metal shrinks so in order to cope up with that shrinkage we have to provide a shrinkage allowance which is a positive type of allowance in the pattern so here as you can see when the metal shrink after solidification but gray cast iron is an exception there that the gray cast iron generally expands on solidification apart from gray cast iron if we are casting other material then for that we have to give the shrinkage allowance it is generally expressed in terms of this unit which is millimeter per minute and it differs from material to material so it varies from material to material that how much shrinkage allowance is, is required in the pattern then we have the second category which is called as the draft or taper allowance as the name is suggesting that it has certain taper on the surface so the pattern is having certain taper on the surface so what happens here we have to uh, place the pattern inside a sand cast inside the sand so as to uh, create an impression on the sand surface and a cavity is created let's say we have vertical walls so let's say we have vertical walls on the surface of the pattern we have the pattern like this this shaded this hatched surface is the pattern that we have created and we want an impression on the surface of the sand uh, which is used to um, create the mold so what happens we want to expel or remove this pattern from the surface of the uh, sand uh, mold so what happens in this situation this this would create deterioration of the sand and that would not uh, lead to the formation of a very good casting so for that purpose we have to provide certain draft on the surface of pattern so that during the expulsion from the sand part it would create it would not hinder the surface of the sand so what happens here taper is generally provided on the vertical surfaces of the pattern so that it can it could be removed easily from the sand without tearing away the sides of the sand mold and this taper is generally uh, 
having the value 1 degree to 3 degree. So this is a kind of allowance, the second category that we give on the pattern. Then we have the third allowance category which is the machining allowance or the finishing allowance. In case of uh, this allowance what happens, um, some extra material is generally uh, be there on the final product which is the casting. Why the extra material is there? Because the casting generally uh, is not having a good surface finish. So after uh, the primary process which is the casting process we have to perform additional secondary process so that the extra material is to be removed from the surface. And if this extra material from the surface if it is removed then for that we have to give certain allowances and that allowance is called as the machining allowance. Here what happens the casting or the casted product is generally poor in, in uh, the dimensions. So what happens we have to leave certain extra material on the surface of the casting so as to enable their machining or the finishing. So as to obtain the general required surface and required size of the final product that we want to achieve. So this uh, machining allowance is generally added in the pattern dimensions and this allowance uh, is provided only in the machining areas. So what is the basic idea behind this machining allowance is uh, the casting is generally not having a good dimensional stability. So in order to have the final dimensions we have to perform a secondary machining operation. So in order to perform that secondary machining operation we have certain wastages. So in order to cope up or overcome those wastages we have to provide a machining allowance on the pattern. Then the third category is the distortion or the camber allowance and this type of allowance is generally there for the typical shapes like U, V, T shape type of castings. These castings generally get distorted after solidification and distortion is generally observed in the irregular castings and they generally shrink in an uneven manner. So in order to cope up with the, the shrinkage part, we have to give an allowance which is called as a distortion or camber on the surface. As you can see on the diagram, you have to produce this type of section which is the I section and this after solidification would become this. This would be a distorted type of casting after solidification. So this would lead to a surface which is this surface. So in order to cope up with this situation we have to provide an allowance on the surface of the pattern and this type of pattern is to be produced in order to produce this I section. So that pattern is called as a cambered pattern. When it gets solidified after pouring in the metal when it gets solidified it would create this shape. So in order to cope up with this distortion we have to give a camber or a distortion allowance on the surface of pattern. So this generally varies from 2 to 20 mm depending upon the situation that we want to create. And lastly we have the wrapping or the shaking allowance or shake allowance. When, whenever we want to expel the pattern from the sand uh, mold, so what happens we generally shake that pattern and then expel it from the surface. During shaking there is certain amount of material. Uh, which would be produced or which would be added to the length of the mold uh, which is there inside that cavity. So in order to cope up with that situation we have to provide a shaping or the wrapping allowance on the surface of pattern. See uh, before the withdrawal from the sand mold the pattern is wrapped around the vertical faces and during that wrapping it would enlarge the mold cavity slightly. So just to facil uh, felicitate its removal. So when this wrapping is done, the mold cavity becomes generally enlarged. So in order to have or in order to cope up with the enlargement of the cavity, what happens? The size is being reduced. The pattern size is generally reduced. So this allowance is important in the large size castings and precision castings. So what happens we, whenever we are providing some extra uh, type of uh, the, the size of the mold enlarges whenever we expel the pattern from the surface. So for that situation we have this wrapping allowance or the shaking allowance. 
So with this, we come to the end of the first part of the video in which we have seen the basic process of the casting and we have learnt the definition of pattern, the different materials which are used to prepare the pattern and also uh, the allowances which are there in the pattern before casting any product. For detailed conceptual clarity, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing. The link of the book is there in the description box below. If you find the video interesting, like, share, subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for future updates. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.